Every gardener wants thriving soil, and one of the most visible signs that you're on the right track is the presence of earthworms. But if you think tossing in a few food scraps or adding worms to your raised bed is enough to keep them happy, think again. Worms don't just eat raw leftovers, they feed on the microbial life that breaks those materials down. That's right, earthworms are not direct consumers of food scraps but feeders on the microscopic organisms that colonize decaying organic matter. So if your soil lacks microbial activity, your worms won't stick around. They'll go looking elsewhere for a better buffet. At Hydrohaven, we found that keeping worms happy is really about creating the richest microbial buffet possible. And once you understand how that buffet works, you can build it in any container, bed, or plot. Worms are drawn to areas where microbial life is abundant because microbes are their primary food source. When organic matter begins to decompose, bacteria and fungi rapidly move in to break it down. As this microbial bloom spreads, worms follow close behind, consuming both the microbes and the partially decomposed material. It's a symbiotic dance. Microbes unlock nutrients and soften the material, and worms graze through the feast, further accelerating the breakdown process. The richer and more diverse your microbial population, the more attractive your soil becomes to worms, and the more worm castings and aeration you'll benefit from. The first way to build this microbial buffet is to add a wide variety of organic materials to your soil, especially those that decay at different rates. Soft kitchen scraps like overripe fruits and vegetable peels jumpstart bacterial activity, while fibrous materials like leaves, stems, and aged straw support fungal growth. This balance between fast and slow decomposition allows a layered microbial ecosystem to flourish. When you create feeding zones with mixed materials and cover them with mulch, you're setting the stage for a feast that not only sustains worms, but encourages them to multiply. Fermented materials such as bokashi or fermented rice water can dramatically amplify microbial diversity and speed up colonization. These inputs act like microbial starters, injecting your soil with billions of living organisms that begin working immediately. Moisture is another key ingredient. Without consistent moisture, microbial activity slows and worms suffer. Most microbes, like the ones that attract worms, require a damp environment to function. Dry soil becomes sterile quickly, while moist shaded soil becomes biologically rich. That's why worms often cluster under mulch, logs, or compost heaps, where the moisture stays consistent and the microbial life is dense. If your raised bed or container drains too quickly or the top few inches stay dry, even with watering, you're actually cutting off this microbial buffet right at the surface. This is also why bare soil often goes lifeless. Sunlight bakes off moisture, halts microbial activity, and sends worms deeper or away entirely. Another way to feed the microbial network is by using compost teas or worm casting teas. These are not fertilizers in the traditional sense, they're microbial inoculants that introduce living bacteria, fungi, and protozoa directly into your soil. When sprayed or poured around feeding zones, they enhance the breakdown of organic matter and build biofilms that worms just love to graze on. You can also encourage natural populations of microbes by burying small amounts of aged compost fermented kitchen scraps or even alfalfa pellets. As these materials ferment or rot, the microbial populations really explode and begin colonizing surrounding soil, drawing worms in from all sides. Avoiding chemical inputs is just as important, you know. Synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, and even some pH-altering soil conditioners can actually wipe out beneficial microbes. And when the microbial buffet collapses, well, so does worm activity. A seemingly fertile garden that's regularly dosed with high nitrogen feeds may grow lush plants above ground, but be biologically empty below. Worms may show up briefly but won't stay if the soil doesn't support the microbial life they depend on. So, stick with organic practices, add materials slowly and consistently, and remember that you're not just feeding your plants, you're feeding the system that supports them. 
Soil structure also plays a role. Compacted oxygen-poor soils slow down microbial growth and force worms to dig deeper than they'd like. Microbes need air just like worms do, and when you mix in coarse organic matter, things like chopped leaves, old straw, or wood shavings, you create air pockets where microbial colonies can establish. These pockets also make it easier for worms to move through the soil grays on biofilms and leave their castings behind. The long-term payoff of this approach is massive. A soil system rich in microbial life and earthworms becomes self-regenerating. You'll notice better water retention, healthier plant roots, fewer pest problems, and richer, darker soil with every season. More importantly, your raised bed or container won't need constant amending or feeding because the living web below is doing the heavy lifting. It's a quiet cycle, often invisible to the eye, but absolutely essential to soil health. When you feed the microbes, you feed the worms. And when you feed the worms, they give back in ways no fertilizer can. If this guide helped you understand the power of the microbial buffet, and why it's the secret to keeping earthworms in your garden, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this video with other growers. The more we learn about what's really happening underground, the better we can grow above it. Your soil isn't just dirt, it's a living restaurant. And when it's stocked with the right ingredients, the earthworms will never want to leave.